Yeah, so go ahead and take a seat. I think one of the main problems that YouTube right now has an abundance of average looking, unfunny uh, people making content. Uh, and for Matt and I, like, they can do what they want. But as good looking members of the public, I think it's, you know, we have to take it upon ourselves to kind of make the next leap forward. Not that many people ever get to experience being in space, especially poor people. And uh, I, I hope that poor people can look at people like me and Ryan and, uh, you know, use us as kind of like a, like a beacon of light in the fog. First getting on the bus was the first step. I, I was nervous at the start. You know, the nerves were setting in on the bus. We were, we were both a little bit nervous. Um, it's hard to tell if Tucker was nervous. You can't tell by his face, really, because it's kind of always this, like, scrunched up, contorted look like he's in pain, kind of like a troll doll. There was a bit of a troublemaker on the bus ride to the uh, launch pad. There's this guy that wanted to cause some problems. Yeah, he's, <laughs> his legs are bouncing. Uh, Captain Richard Phillips, he was on the flight with us. Um, you might remember him from Captain Phillips. Not, not the movie, but the, the, Cap, the Captain Phillips thing that happened with the pirates. He made an off-color remark about Ryan's Parkinson's and that just, that wasn't very cool, but you know. I mean, the dude, the dude got kidnapped by pirates and that's kind of badass, but... Have you seen Captain Phillips? Luckily, after the situation uh, with that guy, uh, things kind of calmed down on the bus. The only other problem being uh, Tucker decided not to put on any deodorant that day, like most days, but we figured it was a job and he would, he would do his due diligence. Uh, it's whatever. It just, it just kind of had a, a lingering. Why, why was this guy even there? Uh, Tucker is like, what, Tucker is what Matt and I like to call, uh, a, a, a tripod with a personality. Not much of a personality on the tripod, but you know. Gotta give him something. He knows how to hold a camera and uh, put on some headphones and really, really hone in on his work. He's great at what he does. His upkeep on it, on, in, a per, on a, in his personal life, on a personal level, leaves a lot uh, to be desired. I don't want him showing up to like birthday parties or anything like that. That would. Our decision to bring Tucker along. Um... I guess one way to put it is it's a symptom of uh, how generous and charitable Ryan and I are to poor people. When we arrived and first saw the ship, I had never seen something like that before. It's usually on TV. You know, you see like famous uh, space shuttle landings and stuff like that, and uh, the Challenger. Uh, when we first got off the bus and, and stepped onto the, uh, the launch pad and, and we saw the spaceship for the first time, that's, it dawned on us, you know? We're going to space. When the engine juices started to flow, my my pockets were jostling. The you could feel the raw power from that spaceship. Liftoff was was something else. I mean, you would you experience uh, five or six times regular gravity on takeoff, which you know can really pushes your face back. Um, what was funny actually for Tucker it was a bit of an improvement. Were you nervous? Well, I wasn't. I wasn't so nervous as to the trajectory of the spaceship because Matt and I planned that out beforehand and told the pilot exactly what to do. When we first got into the black void of space, you just feel this weightlessness kind of overcome you, and you just you, you have your friends that you talk to, whether that's uh, Shatner. Musk, whoever, and they, they always say like space is fun and it's fun to be in space. Their words really don't prepare you for how fun space truly is.
first getting up there and experiencing the like true like weightlessness is <sighs> there are, there are no words to describe it there's only one word that can describe it cool experiencing total weightlessness you know it's something that most poor people only dream of they'll never get to do it but we did and that's pretty cool I don't think I've ever felt more happiness than in that moment with the jelly beans. That was, um, that was no lie when I, when I said, this is the happiest moment of my life. This is the coolest thing I've ever done in my entire life. I am so happy right now. I really, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Unfortunately, through no fault of my own, I became a bit uneasy on the aircraft. I don't want to blame Tucker completely, but you're up there for a while. I don't know, do the math there, right? It just gets in your throat, like in the back of your throat. You know, smells very linked to like taste. And so it uh, just, yeah. It, it, about halfway through the flight, Tucker actually ended up having a panic attack um, because he realized he was in space, uh, which I don't know why he didn't realize that was gonna happen. He knew we were going to, we told him we were going to space, but he might not actually be able to read very well. And he might've just not been able to read the text messages we sent him about going to space. So he might've just thought we were going for a bus ride. Um, he loves bus rides. I really don't know why Tucker was so ungrateful to be a part of the mission. Cause I would think that, you know, he would be kissing our feet, but what comes to mind is, uh, you know, how he was raised. He grew up in the Ozarks and uh, what's it's called the meth belt. And I actually think he might have smoked meth growing up, which uh, could be one explanation for why his teeth are that way. Um, what kind of training did you have to do? Um, the, the training that we went through was, was pretty tough. Uh, intensive astronaut training uh, that, in, that required us to, I think they made us uh, eat a certain diet before the flight. We could only have like a biscuit. And that for me was probably one of the more challenging parts of training. You know, they'd only let us eat like a biscuit for breakfast. Um, Ryan snuck a little candy, you know. Can't fault a brother. Not to say that I have a problem with food, but I do enjoy it uh, quite a bit. I think on four or five occasions I watched uh, Ron Howard's Apollo 13 starring Tom Hanks, uh, Bill Paxton, and um, Kevin Spacey. Do you think it's more important to be the first astronaut or the newest astronaut? I don't think that really plays a role. I think it's all about the role that you choose to play yourself in space exploration. And Matt and I being two very forward-thinking YouTubers um, decided to take one for the team, so to speak, for everyone else and, and make that leap. You know, we're not, we're not the first billionaires in space, of course, but we are the first YouTubers in space. And I think that's important because there's so much average, below average content on YouTube. I'd say 99% like of it. I've tried to watch other YouTubers content. I end up falling asleep. I, I bore myself to death. So for, for us to step up to the plate in this way is, is really huge. Just the fact that we were able to pull this off, um, I think speaks to hopefully YouTubers everywhere to be finally taken seriously. After accomplishing this, I just hope that more people take us seriously, you know? And I think if they don't take us seriously, then they're, they're dumbasses. Or they're just jealous poor people, you know? Poor people should be thanking us for what we did. You know, we, we, we have like the usual kind of puppets that go out on Jimmy Kimmel or, or Conan that just kind of like yeah you play video games you know so do we but did you go to space I don't think so I mean this was a big step forward for rich people <laughs> seeing space for the f first time was <laughs> I'm sorry I'm just so proud of us, <laughs> you know? That's all I can really say is I'm proud of us. I think everyone else should be too. I can't thank everyone involved enough, mainly Matt, 
and uh, I think I, I think you can thank yourself. Like it's appropriate in a, in a situation like this. We went to space. We were the first YouTubers in space. I felt like an alien on my own planet when I got back. You know, my life had changed that much. And uh, I think we also had changed the, the political landscape and the social landscape of not just YouTube, but um, the United States of America. We, we took the challenge, we took it seriously, and we accomplished it. And now we're hoping that through this era of peace we have kindly distributed onto the YouTube space, people can make somewhat entertaining and impressive content. Not like us, though. Never like us.